Hello there, everyone. My name is Udur Jagero, and I am sitting down with uh, Onyango Otieno, otherwise known as Rex Point. Now, a couple of months ago, or just about a month ago, right? A month ago, yeah. a month ago uh, Onyango posted something on Twitter, and he was talking about how to take care of uh, the women or the ladies that come over to your space or your house. And specifically what he said that he usually stocks sanitary towels, sanitary pads, or just pads, so that uh, a guest that comes to his house can be able to help themselves during um, an emergency or a crisis. Yes. Yeah? And there was a lot of backlash. I think the backlash was almost 99% from men and then a couple of ladies maybe let's say uh, a quarter of the ladies were not very happy with uh, the post that he put out there and uh, i think I, i personally i don't understand why there was so much backlash about it because when onyango ricks put that thing uh, on twitter i there was something that uh, it reminded me of the, of the way he takes care of his house basically But then we are going to talk about that and I think Onyango is going to be giving a lot of context around why he said that and why he believes in that. We are also going to be talking about uh having children, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh why Onyango does not want to have children and why I also have a very uh, strong opinion around having children and how many people have. So, Mr. Onyango, thank you very much. We are going to talk about this. Uh the first thing that uh I have been to your house several times. Yes. And uh I have not uh, I I I saw some pads. <laughs> <laughs> But then to be fair to you, you know, yeah. and uh, this is not because of your friends. Of course, of I course. also I also got to have uh a clean and used a toothbrush yeah the day you needed one <laughs> the day i needed one yes. and there are a couple of things that i've needed in your house the last the last time nili pig was on a fifa mm-hmm. and i was having a serious headache yeah. and i got um, you know a painkiller yes you know for so it's it's i have my reasons why i think there was a backlash mm-hmm. you know um so for me i i feel like So let's talk about men who had a backlash mm-hmm. and why I think they had a problem. Mm-hmm. So over since the dawn of uh, feminism, mm-hmm. since the dawn of uh, men being called dogs, mm-hmm. called trash and told a million things to do mm-hmm. in order to be men. Uh the men that I talk to are very I'm very tired sort of angry about being told things to do they are tired of that there is a lady who I had a conversation with during that furore about your post and this is what she told me uh not verbatim mm-hmm. she told me that she can see the reason why the women were pissed off at what you said mm-hmm. so women are saying that a, 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 a very a very substantial percentage of women are saying that um, the men are no longer interested in relationships with women you know and they f- this category of women feel like men have been beaten too much and they they have been told do this do that do this do that and they are sort of confused about it And so one what you see with the men is that they they are, they 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 have sort of taken several steps back and are no longer interested in 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 relationships they are in, no longer interested in in building that community or starting a family and they feel that what she was saying was that i feel like the women that were attacking onyango are the ones that are saying let men be men mm-hmm. You get. Mm-hmm. So 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 that was the 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 idea. If you ask me about my what I think about 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 that. So I feel like so what I want us to do is is for you to give context and explain why you feel like why why is it important? Because another lady was saying that if if Onyango is my boyfriend 
I should be able to leave my pads at Onyango's place. Mm. And then when I have a crisis, mm. I can go and use them. Mm. The other question that does that does not answer is how about if you're not Onyango's girlfriend mm. and you end up at Onyango's place? Mm. You know? Mm. Uh so those are the those are the those are the dynamics. So probably what is what is what is the story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's so funny because the day I posted that, yeah, it was a Monday, I think Tuesday morning. Mm. We was from spending the weekend together. Yes, all of you were at my house. Yeah, and then just before you left, I decided to take a picture and you know post this, uh, this, this, this sanitary towels. Yeah. Now, there are multi-layered reasons as to why, and it's not the first time actually, and you know that that yeah. I posted such a picture mm. talking about. I wonder, I wonder why the second one was 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 met met with such kind of reaction, and the other one yeah. was yeah. Well, even the other one, there was there, it was there. You may not have caught it as much, but this one was way bigger, of course. Yeah. Now. You were in Mombasa going for a TEDx. This, all this thing was burning. The in house the was burning when you were going to Mombasa to, yeah. to, to do this TEDx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, we were, I, I was, I was very afraid of what is going on in your head, whether you were, you were, you were, you were still having it together. You know. Nah, I, I think for most parts I was okay. Mm. It's just that, of course, it some of this energy gets to you because. There's so many, like thousands of people actually, are on your mentions talking about things they know nothing about, yeah. accusing you of things. There's somebody who even fabricated a story that I have a child somewhere. Yes, to which to which, to which immediately said no. Yeah, and and, and th- there's a guy who was telling me that uh, that how can you be so sure that Onyango does not have a child? I said to them <laughs> that I might not know yeah. if Onyango is having a child outside, yeah. but I am sure. Yeah. Onyango can be a deadbeat. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is that is something I was man, sure of. You see. It was so interesting. It was just interesting to but see. But then what but then happened. again, we are we are going to answer that question. Onyango, we are going to answer those questions. But then you have said something that is important. Yeah. And dealing with uh, before we get to that, dealing with uh, honestly, I have never dealt with so much backlash mm. in my life on social media. Mm. In that scale. Yes. You dealt with the Sunday the, with the with the nation media one. Yeah, it was bad. A, and this was coming just 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 four or five months later. later yeah. You know. Yeah. So and I was talking to a gag and I was telling a gag how how do you do you do you do you do you do you sort of have a layer to this? Mm-hmm. Is there a defense mechanism that you usually that you can employ to for example, what would you tell somebody that uh, that is that is that is getting this kind of backlash and they have never gotten it because i feel like if you've gotten for example if you've gotten five six seven ten of them you are different from somebody who is experiencing at the same time yeah. at the fa- for the first time yeah yeah well i i wouldn't know what to tell somebody because i'm very grounded in who i am mm-hmm. i don't go online to just say things i can't back yeah, you know, I know. I know what I'm saying. I know where mm. it's coming from. If you ask me why, I will tell you. I will explain to you the mechanics of my my stories and my communications. You see, mm. um, and so as you know, some people insinuate I'm looking for likes, I'm looking for attention, I'm looking for all these things. But it's the conversations that come out of these these posts that actually tell you who we are, where we are as a culture, as a society. And I'm a storyteller. For a storyteller. I do not have responsibility over how you will interpret mm. what I'm writing, how I'm saying it, okay? It's my responsibility to communicate. And for me, I choose to go to that place that we feel very uncomfortable about as a culture, as a society, okay? So over the years, because I've been trained on engaging uh, online media, this is also a profession. I understand mob psychology. I understand what it's like for one person to see somebody is being bullied and then they also jump on it and they don't know you. They don't know the full mechanics of the story. You get what I mean? And it, it happens in droves and droves and droves and droves. So many times what I do, I just watch. Mm. I just watch it. Sometimes I switch off for a while. Like right now, I've not been on Twitter actively f- maybe s- for a month now like because mm. it was too much uh, the way this one came it was too much so i was posting mostly on facebook and and twitter and, and instagram you get what i mean but then there are also very many positives that came out of it 
uh, and one of them was there were men who were coming to my DM asking me where they could get those specific brands of sanitary towels for their partners and that's a good thing like really even if it was it was one or two people for me that's a good thing now i am not responsible for the politics around sanitary pads and periods i am not responsible for it but i'm living in this culture i'm dating women i have a sister i have a mother all of them are going through this thing every month of their lives man you see there's no way i can be outside this conversation as a as a guy it's mm. going to get to me yeah. and how it started was way back in 2016 uh so we are going to the context yes the story and yes. and one day this chick who was coming to my house for sex mm. and yeah it, it was that's, a, that's weird she was coming for sex yeah we had agreed that she's coming to my house for sex these things happen where where do you live <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i'm i'm well well well, well. She was coming to your house for sex. Yeah, we had agreed she's coming to my house for sex. Mm. And uh she was not your girlfriend. No, she wasn't. Damn, she actually happened to be a, a very old ex of mine. <laughs> but there was a rematch. It wasn't really a rematch, mm. but we were horny at the same time. Oh, <laughs> nyango. <laughs> <laughs> and so we came to an agreement yeah. that we shall sort each other out. <laughs> Damn. Okay. That's Nairobi, yeah. Yes, it's the all over the world. So <laughs> <laughs> So she happened to be having irregular periods. Yes, okay? Mm. That's not something I knew about. How I was conditioned about periods, in fact, was I used to think they come like salaries to every woman <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the month after 28 days. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. That's what I always thought. Yeah. But it wasn't true. Periods come and everybody has their own cycle. Yeah. So it was midnight and this woman's guest just came. Mm. You see. Um and so I had to go to the shop at midnight to get a fucking sanitary towel, man. Mm. You know, and the shopkeeper was looking at me weirdly because what's a man coming to buy a sanitary pad at 12 a.m. for? You, you get what I mean? And I just promised myself. Do they sell them at that time though? The shop is open so it's there. Yeah, they they won't tell you it's not there because of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but then I promised myself that I will never be gotten unawares. See uh, like after that. That is in 2016. That's 2016. Mm. But then even as I started learning about sexual and reproductive health and rights and coming to learn about period poverty um and even beyond that just the essence of care for the people who come to my space because what people don't know is even you guys when you come to my house i try i try to take care of people right there are several towels that people can use when they need to shower there are several toothbrushes that people can use when they need to to to, to brush their teeth there is oil there there is you know we cook i take you out to to eat you know i pay for the shit and sometimes we have to share the cost you know mm-hmm. like it's not just a woman's issue that's who i am and it's who i am because that's how i've been brought up you know i always watched my mother take care of people and she was a very it still is a very caring woman um any guests that came home it never mattered whether you knew them or not and i saw this in ugenya as well like strangers who were just traveling and they needed water and they'd be given water and they'd go on with their journeys so for me the biggest conversation about that tweet wasn't that uh i want at uh, men feel overextended or men feel like it's too much for them uh and women feel like this is just their own thing i feel like generally still as a culture we do not put the element of care in our relationships even in our friendships like it's just not there and like you and i understand you know like we would like even I- any time i'm in your house i feel like i'm at home because there is water there is food we are fed we have a good time i never feel like i'm lacking something just because i'm not in my house if i need a towel i'll ask you for a towel you know what i mean so 
that essence of care it's just not in our relationships and the way i phrased that tweet was so harmless but the yani it was just twisted do, 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 do we have it you can look for it in my the tw- on my twitter and just look at the media so the the tweet says you don't have to be in a relationship to care for the women who visit you and and i feel like i feel like the interpretation to this to this tweet is like sadly you are talking to men why are you talking to men I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so because of the context of the picture. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to men. Mm. Yeah. So what why what heterosexual men for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> men 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 who like women. Yes. Men who like women. Uh fair enough. So um so that was what that is that is that is the so you had you have panadol actually you don't just have pads. Is 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 pads related to is panadol related to pads? Yeah, that that time of the month for women uh, is e- extremely painful. Yeah. So it's just responsible to have painkillers in the house. Mm. You see, uh, to help them with the process. It's such a simple human thing mm. to do, <laughs> but we we just add too much politics into it. Uh, and I get what you're saying with um, you know some people feeling that men have been told what to do uh, all the time in terms of these relationships. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm what I'm just offering us is to overhaul the politics and look at each other as as people. Mm. you see uh, and that means we we all have to do the emotional labor of understanding how we got here and why relationships are as crazy as they are mm. today you get what i mean i never want people to have anxieties when they are around my house in my house yeah. even outside like in rela- relationship wise i don't want you to be anxious when you're talking to me just because you think i won't understand you or i'm bashful or all these kind of things all of us want to be understood that's mm. just it and you know uh, there was a facebook friend who told me something so interesting uh, in explaining why some of the backlash also came from women mm. and she said all of women's lives they've been shamed about this thing they've been told that it's dirty it's been difficult to talk about it in public because of the misunderstandings around it right and all of a sudden here comes rix who is just so open about it as if it's it's just having a cup of tea you know it's some people have felt i have oversimplified it you know and yet it's something that you know some women are very attached to it emotionally you get what i mean um and at the same time i also understand the complexities surrounding masculinities especially around the role of men in these relationships and uh, the standards with which they feel they are quote unquote forced to adhere in order to um uh, deserve love or affection from from the women that they want with the women they love socialization yes, about exactly. around socialization around 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 people being told that this is dirt yeah. i don't understand it it's well, last just. last week mm-hmm. my niece who is in form 1 asked me for 150 shillings she was in my house during this holiday and i asked her what do you want to do with it and she was like very something very important mm. <laughs> and i asked again and like if you're not going to tell me what you're going to do with money i'm <laughs> not giving it to you yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and she refused completely to tell me yeah. and she she rushed to mama maya to give her the same amount yeah. and i think mama maya asked and she told mm. she explained to the woman yeah mm. so where did a form 1 student know about the shame surrounding uh is from their mothers as well but it's also very religious because this thing uh especially for abrahamic religions um you know uh, that time of the month a woman is considered dirty really yes they say so yeah it's rare it's there like you're not ca- you're not supposed to uh, interact uh, i think in some religions you you don't have sex with this person during this time um there are certain things a woman going through periods cannot do uh, religiously 
uh, yeah. re- in religious terms. Um, and so it's almost like she stops being a human being. Uh, give Okay, you know, and some sometimes we say that depending on the context of the the translations um the 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 meaning of the purpose of secluding women during this time mm. might be well intentioned but how it comes out comes out uh, harmfully or 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 um controlling you get what i mean so for me we have to define these things for ourselves you don't always have to wait to hear them from emblems of power that uh, uh, manage how we run our lives mm. so you find this is a teenager she can't even talk about it to you and it's a normal thing but I'm, 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 I'm just i'm just i'm just wa- i'm just wondering who has told her that she can tell this to she can tell explain this to my wife and she can tell me i mean you, you what see how wha- socialization works jagero somebody may not really come and tell you this is dirty dirty but it's the way you see your environment treat this thing and then yeah. you just learn it see you just learn you just learn by observing and that's how children learn they just learn by observing that hey we, periods you, where do you and 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 you think that she's going to amare because she understands that this person has this has yeah. has, has gone through the same dad she understands and me understands the story because i mean my sister would comfortably talk about periods with my mom my mother has never told me anything about periods yeah she, in fact even at home those things were being hidden as if they were some secrets man you know you mm. would just bump into them by accident i was like oh she uses my mother would use them you, you know what i mean never even one day in my life did i ever know that my mother is going through periods never yeah and i bet neither did you <laughs> you never and so as you're growing and then now you're meeting women and you realize this thing actually exists at what point do you think your mother would tell you that she's going through periods when she's in pain maybe yeah yeah and it's crazy pain core <laughs> it's crazy pain it's cramping and yeah cramping is really painful and of course it's different with with different women but some of that sh- stuff is really painful and but you see in our culture we don't give space for that for mm. women to express this pain for for this space to even exist you know that time like you're at home you needed you, you still have to cook <laughs> you know you still have to show up. Is it that women should not be president because what do they do how do they make decisions when they are they're in they're in they're cramping now, things like those. Now seriously, how can we reason like that <laughs> as, as human beings? How can we reason like that surely? Mm. You, you get what I mean? So yeah. it is in the culture. People learn it. Girls learn it. Boys learn it. Yeah. And then you say, "Oh, so if a if a, today if a woman is on the street and she 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 sports her dress, yeah. you know, she would feel like she's very in in a, in, a, in an, she's very insecure and people also look at her funny instead of trying to help yeah. so you find most likely it's a woman who will come with a lesson to cover her yeah but men would want to shy away many times yeah. if we normalized these things it wouldn't be even a, a, a conversation do you think women want to normalize it i think there are a good chunk of women who are still in in the shame so mm. they, there's fear Yeah. They may want it to be normal, but there's fear you just don't know. It's almost the the same conversation that we were having the other day about if you're a man and your your the date or the woman you like earns more than you, how do you go about it? You want it to be normalized for it to be okay. <laughs> But you're like what's going to happen in this thing? No <laughs> man. Let's talk about let's talk about kids. Yeah. Uh you want to go for vasectomy. Yes. Uh, I don't know why you are still shying away from it. You 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 rudely told me that you'll go when you want. <laughs> 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 What why are you having why are you why are you why are you being in a hurry for me? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you, you know? Yeah. So about kids, I have my I have my reason. So a lot of people have have asked me why I I'm have having, uh, yeah. why I'm only stopping at one kid. Yes. And the reason one is last week mm-hmm. i was having a meeting with uh, with uh, with uh, a church exec uh-huh. executive mm-hmm. those people 40 <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, he asked me about it about what about what when i'm having the next child what? okay yes yeah, and uh, uh-huh. yeah and uh, i told him no i am not uh, 
I, d- I think I'm stopping there. And he told me that, is it because of health reasons? Because that was the first thing that he told me. And I told me, it to- I told him, no, it's not, it's not health reason. And uh, so when you ask about health reason, they're asking whether the lady has, your wife has a health reason mm. or you have a health reason, mm. you know? Mm. So it's not. And uh, around, around, basically around my circles, everybody at home in the village, my friends, they would, what I find very, we are going to go into the reasons why you don't have a child, but one of the craziest things I've heard about me having another child is so that my daughter mm-hmm. can have somebody to play with. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, so, in 20 years... Mm-hmm. This one that I'm supposed to have, the second one, mm. comes to me and hypothetically <laughs> asked me <laughs> yes. why I had them. Yeah. And I am telling them that so that you can be a playmate. <laughs> Not because I planned for you and I wanted you to be here. Yeah. Just so that Maya <laughs> cannot be alone. Cannot be alone. And the other day, uh, somebody asked me the same thing in the house yesterday. Oh. And they said that I should have this girl having a playmate. But mind you, there is Phoebe. Mm. My, my he, no, the cousins are just gone. Who is Phoebe? Phoebe is the, is the, is the, is the daughter to my, to my, to my wife's uh, sister. Okay, so yeah, that's Maya's cousin. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> cousin. Kizungu <laughs> buwana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so still a cousin. I thought you meant the other cousins. No, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but this is another cousin. So Maya is usually having yeah. people playing with so, during holidays. Yes. And Girani is there yes, are yes. all over the place. You've yeah, seen them yeah. in my house. They're always together. So I don't understand. My reason for not having many children, as people want, is that I simply can't afford it. Yeah. That is, and and, and, and people, people, some, some people, there is a song that is very much known. Kijana nakuja na nini yake? Women were so pissed off at that. Yeah. And uh, I I feel that it is irresponsible to say that uh, I I know the cost of what I want somebody that I take care of. Mm-hmm. You know, one of these days my 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 daughter can tell me that can I can we go and take Chipo mm-hmm. at Java, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And because she's one, yeah. The Java Java sells sells chips mm. for about four hundred and fifty. Mm. You know, mm. so if a child just asks you from the blues to go and spend four hundred and fifty on her, mm. you're going to be with her Java. Yeah. You're not going to be looking at her eating. Yeah. You're going to be munching onto something. Yeah. Coffee is three hundred and fifty, yeah. and if you're munching into with almond croissant, yeah. it is a thousand. Yeah. You see, Plaza has 1,500 and a kid can go and say, like Maya just goes and grabs something on the table and says, I want this. Yeah. And the waiter is there looking. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, she's pointing at a milkshake, which yeah. is 600 bob. Yeah, she wants. <laughs> she wants. And that takes the bill to 1,500. Yeah. If you have three of those kids, <laughs> you are at 5,000. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I can easily go with Maya to Java, which I went yesterday with her and she took, she, she ate like 700 shillings, mm. you know. Mm. But I'm having many of them, and that's just Java. Yeah. You have not come back to the house. Yeah. <laughs> you have not looked at school fees. Yeah. You have not looked at the clothes. Yeah. You have not looked at basically anything. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, mm. I want to t- just take care of this one child yeah. because I can't afford, afford the other. And I, the other thing I'm saying is, right now, life expectancy in mm. Kenya is about 70 right now. Mm. Right now, I am 40, mm. going to 41 in July. If I have a child right now, and these days they don't leave the house, by the way. Mm. They just go to school and finish school and they're just there watching Netflix, yeah. you know, and chilling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they will start moving out at 30 years. Yeah. If I get a child right now, and hypothetically they're going to leave my house at 30, yes. damn, yeah. I'll be 70. Yeah. Still taking care of the expenses. And they are saying in my culture that the, these people will take care of you when you are old. Mm-hmm. I'm not old at 70. <laughs> you are very old at 70. I am very, very old yeah, at 70. Yeah. And I don't want... Do you know, at 65, somebody is having a child in high school. Three. Moja yeah. Mombasa High School. Ingine yeah. Kilguri's High School. Ingine Iku University. So, at your... <laughs> 
<laughs> kuna bibi kwa nyumba na kuna bibi kwa nyumba na kuna black tap hey, wengine hey, wanazaa hey, wanakuletea hey, bwana these, these daughters they just go there and then they bring you yeah. these are your grand people yeah what will you do there's nothing you can do <laughs> but anyway that's my story and that is why i'm saying yeah. mimi the, my life i just want to be at 50 Yeah. We are adults. Yeah. Three yeah. adults yeah. in the house. Yeah. People are saying that who is going to take care of you when you sell yourself. But I'm saying it is all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After enjoying myself I can soil myself. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so For why sure. why so I want to talk to you about I completely disagree with you. On what? On 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 cutting your balls off. Yes. <laughs> you you are calling That's it okay. you are calling vasectomy That's okay. <laughs> so me I, me thinks that you can always you can always do these things the or the other way but you can do, do you it mean? your way what are you saying <laughs> <laughs> why do you want to do vasectomy i mean you understand the reason why i don't have kids yeah. by the way if my wife leaves me now The reason why I don't want to cut to go to the vasectomy if my leaves my wife leaves me now and takes off with my only daughter and I can only see them on Instagram you know yeah. with another man in yeah. Mombasa yeah, and you, you know kill and I I have this woman coming to me and telling me Jagero mimi mm. nimekupenda lakini mm. nataka kamtoto uh-huh. I can always have some some sa, 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 something in the in store <laughs> kwa engine <laughs> Hey no. I understand. <laughs> Why do you visa? Yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> you know having this conversation with Goofy when you were driving to Nakuru. Yeah, him. Goofy also I he hear has, doesn't want children. He has already like he t- procured a vasectomy a while back. Procured? Yeah, like him is done down. Shit. Yeah, and it's happening. It's common. It's not like at his news. Do you know Mary Stops? Last year made a call that they are giving a free service for vasectomy. And that was very controversial. Exactly. Because people were saying that you are giving me vasectomy mm-hmm. for free, mm-hmm. but you can't reverse it for free. But you're going there because you want you don't want children. You, you like they, they're not forcing but you to go there. But only fools don't change their minds, Rick. Farm like you can agree like you agree with yourself that you don't want this to happen for you and it's okay. Really? So if if that is an arrangement you an agreement you've had with your <laughs> mental faculties, right? And you go ahead and do it. It's not out of this world. It's really so simple. It's not out of this world. But I feel like we are very attached to children. As yeah. A culture. Because of that very reason they ask you. So who will take care of my mother has asked me the same question. So who will take care of she's having sleepless nights right now because of the same thing. Who will take care of you when you're old? That's why I want to work more to get people who can work for me and take care of me during that time. Because a nurse. children are mo- a nurse. we don't whatever they will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Children, you can you can em- you, not, you, know, you can em- you can employ a nurse yeah, I can. and pay them 10,000 per, per, uh, yeah. per, per, per week. Yeah, and I'm to totally check. okay with that. Yeah. But I have peace of mind, you know. In when we were in school, they used to ask like one of the reasons they'd say that uh, why Africans were having many children. They'd said children acted as a source of labor. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. The children act as a source of labor. It's, it's an answer. It's an answer. <laughs> yes. And the other thing was it was a symbol of wealth. You see? Dowry. I don't operate. Dowry. No, no, having many children as a symbol of wealth. Dowry is something else. No, 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 but a, a, sing, a single wealth means that when when they're getting married you can be given 100 cows. Okay, there's that. There is that, but also just oh oh yeah, as a prerequisite of having many children, you see that the source of wealth like it's a symbol of wealth that you're you're able to you know uh, expand and all these things. But also I feel like there's also there was just too much dick measuring also. You know like oh the more I'm having the more powerful I am as a guy. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. So in my story, uh, having grown up in a very pl- problematic home Uh, my parents were just vicious to one another for too long yeah. you see i witnessed traumatic things at home S- some i also still have nightmares about those fights they used to have i i watched like too much blood at home people were fighting about everything and nothing 
you know from women to sex to money to my homework to i don't know who i played you know like it was just too much and now i even took up the role of ma- parenting my own parents because i'd be the one now trying to make them to think like adults like oh this one we can't do like this this one you guys need to think that it was for so long and then i also had my siblings and i had to shield them from the emotional chaos that was going on between my parents and all that while i was alone as the first one it was just too much you get what i mean now when i began therapy jagero in 2017 i actually realized how messy that home really was and the real effects it had on my mind you know because the psychosocial effects of growing up with childhood trauma are immense they are immense because you struggle in relationships you know by many times you find that first ones who grew up in this kind of homes also take longer to settle generally in life you know you take longer in, in fact you find that first, if you if you have a, if you're a first born and then there are kids following you you'd find that the f- second born kwenda chini they advanced faster because you there are things you had to hold on for longer and you had to heal from them longer and the your siblings are not as impacted by your parents situations um as you are growing up because you are their first child you are they, they, they were being first time parents with you uh many times you get what i mean so that is one major reason for me i'm just tired of society telling me after this stage of your life you're supposed to go to this other stage and this other stage and this other stage you know because man i started waking up too early to go to nursery school too it was too early and then primary school they still it was just too early and i never slept secondary school university and then now work you're always waking up early you're always on the move always on the move i hate that shit you know me me i love my sleep I love my sleep. I will, I love waking up in my own pace, doing life at my own pace because wh- where am I rushing to? You know, I do not want responsibilities that will make me have to rush to things. You see, and children will inevitably bring that. I don't want that. I want to enjoy my life. I want to rest, to just rest from having to be solving things. There are people that say that if you, if that you are you are you are you are selfish. And that's okay because they won't help me raise these children. Mm. They are also saying that if you if if your parents said that then you would not be here. And that's okay. My parents <laughs> chose to keep me. They chose. I did not force myself upon my mother's uterus, did I? I didn't. And so I came. And so so if if me. humanity is going to be an, uh, extinct because of do your you decisions. Do you think do you think humanity is going to be extinct because Rick said he won't have children? Really? <laughs> <laughs> We are 8 billion people of us here. Do you think that now you say in it, 10 it, years it, or 100 if, years if, if, people won't be here if 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 Kelvin says and, and she says and so let's even say. imagine that 1 billion people today 1 billion people decide they won't have children that is an eighth of the world population mm. children humanity will go extinct no it won't it won't mm. so <laughs> and i'm also on the other side of the economic sense of it mm man life is expensive and the life i would want to give children if i would sire them yeah. is really of high quality yeah. just get one they're saying just get one for what? like you, will you help me pay those bills mm. you see the emotional labor as well of being there for a child being present for a child you know what i mean today is far much more than it was back in the day back in the day when we were living in the village a child will be taken care of by so many people mm. these days koa you are not at home your wife is not at home yeah terrible who is taking care of the kids you know they, what i mean d- parents don't even want them at home they, they want are. them to be in boarding exactly. schools exactly so why are you even having these children who you are not even spending time with you don't even know your kids you don't know them mm. if we are really being honest about this parenting thing there are so many people i know even including our own parents who would not have children today mm. and i feel like those numbers are many but there are social and cultural obligations that so many of our parents had to oblige to that they they had they just had to have kids to belong 
to mm. some some place they had yeah. to belong to get a job even because yeah. even when you know life was starting to change and you're going to look for work it is assumed because you're married you're more responsible it is assumed because you have children you're a parent you're more responsible then it will give you this kind of a salary but was it really true Mm. <laughs> you know. All right, Rick. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh it was very very nice talking to you, chatting to you about 40 minutes of telling us why you are you don't want kids. I explained uh the reason also why. Also I just don't want to enjoy sex without having to think about kids. Yes. Mm. Sex is a very sex sex. Good thing. Sex yeah, I That's think so. Thing. Yeah. Sex without kids. I think God also created people. You think God created we would just to have sex and enjoy it without kids? It's possible. Perhaps. There's so much to sex than just having it for kids. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>